notice here that I'm putting in all these dots to show we're only going to use this formula to find the magnitude of the force. We don't need it for the direction because we just saw how we can find the directions based on common sense. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, your instructor and TA probably um, deal with this a little bit differently. The instructors like to use this formula with R hat, which I think is unfortunate because this is totally unnecessary for an introductory course and I think just tends to confuse people. R hat is just a unit vector that is pointing from charge one to charge two. And its only purpose in this formula is to indicate what the direction of the force is. Um, but we don't need a mathematical way to find the direction because it's just common sense what the direction is. Like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Mm -hmm. So there's never really much point to actually using R hat to solve something. So, um, well, its magnitude is one, but it has a direction as well. Um, so you can't just replace this with a number one exactly because that that would be a scalar and this is a vector. Yeah. But um, like I said, you don't actually you don't need to use our hat to get any problem right. Um, you can get full credit uh, other ways. So I think um, uh, and if you already watched the other video series, um, you saw that I wasn't using our hat in that in that series. So we'll do some more examples. We don't really need our hat. You can see that this formula comes from here because this is the formula for the magnitudes. Well, if all you care about is the magnitudes, then r hat does drop out because the magnitude of r hat is 1. Mm -hmm. Another important thing, though, is then you put in the charges here with no signs because the, the purpose of this equation is not to give you the sign. The sign comes from common sense. So even if a charge is negative, we would still plug in a positive number here. Um, later on, in a couple of weeks, you'll see other formulas where you do put in the signs of the charges. So it's important to know when you should put in the signs of the charges and when you shouldn't. Now, we, we already saw how this tells us that Q, the, the charges are directly related to F, and R is indirectly related. But because this is all about multiplication and division, they're not just directly and indirectly related. The charges are directly proportional to F, and R is inversely proportional to F. For example, if you multiply Q1 by 3, what would happen to F? Um, multiply by 3. That's what it means to be directly proportional, right? And if you multiply r by 3, this is trickier. Well, first of all, should f now be multiplied or divided? Divided. Because they're inversely related. And what should it be divided by? Um, if r is multiplied by 3, what would f be divided by? 3 squared, because of this square here. Mm -hmm. Or, equivalently, we would divide f by 9. Mm -hmm. If we multiply r by 3, you would divide f by 9. Okay. Or if you wanted to, you could say that we're multiplying f by 1 ninth. But I think this is a slightly better way to put it. So let's look at this again. Suppose that you divide r by 4. What, what's happening to f? Um, you're multiplying f by 16. Yeah, by 4 squared, which is 16. That's why this is called an inverse square law. Well, this comes up a lot in the homework and in exams. The fact that you don't need to do the calculation all over again if you're just changing one variable. You can just ask, what is the variable being multiplied or divided by? And then you can read off what you should do to the other variable. Well, let's discuss maybe just in words how we would calculate the force of charge 2 on charge 1 here. How would we go about finding the force of charge 2 on charge 1? Well, first of all, probably the first thing you should do is figure out the direction of the force. Well, what, what will be the direction of the force? Left, right, up, or down? Uh, right. Oh, of charge 2 on charge 1 would be left. 
Right, very important to know which charge we're focusing on. We're focusing on this charge. Well, the direction of this force would be to the left, because like charges repel. Now, the main reason we need one in this direction is to figure out the sign of the force. For example, usually this semester we'll choose these as our positive directions. So what should be the sign of this force? Negative. Right. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make, forgetting to put in the sign. I probably talked about that in the other video series. So maybe we should do that first. Now we have to figure out the magnitude of the force. Oh, so I forgot something. Let's do it like this. Well, how would we calculate the magnitude of this force? Right, so what will we plug in for K? Uh, 9 times 10 to the 9. How about for Q1? Q1 would be um, 5 times 10 to the oh, 5 times 10 to the negative 6. I don't know what that is. So that seems like a good guess, but let's yeah. check that. Okay. Do you know where to look those up in your textbook? Uh, That's also the inside cover. front cover. Where is the text? What is that? Right. Yes, it's Good. Negative That's right. So, again, what would we plug in for Q1? Um, 5 times 10 to the negative 6. That's right. We can't plug in just 5 because this is not standard units yet. That table just tells you that micro means 10 to the negative 6. It means millions. By the way, pretty much every numerical problem you do will be in microcoulombs okay. because coulombs are too big to be practical. Okay. So this is the way you'll see this uh, in the homework, that we will, you will always have to make the conversion into microcoulombs. Okay. Um, otherwise, the answer comes out absurdly, absurdly big. Okay. You can see how that is. This is 10 to the ninth, yeah. right? So we're going to get a huge 10 to the ninth force unless we have very small charges. Yeah. What should we plug in for Q2? Oh, I didn't quite set this up right. One thing I wanted to emphasize here is don't bother plugging in positive 4 or positive 5 um, because we're just plugging in the magnitudes. So even if these had been negative, we would still just plug in positive numbers here because we already got the sign, right? We don't need, um, we're going to do double counting if we start plugging in these signs too. Not only double counting, but it would be wrong counting. You can't use this to get the direction right. All right, and then what should we plug in for R? Um, 3. Yeah, because, uh, well, if we assume that this is in meters, then we could plug that in. Yeah. And don't forget to square that, so then that would turn into a 9. Okay, well, then uh, you can just crank out the answer. And uh, that would give you your answer. Um, and again, the big thing is to not forget to put in this sign. What does this sign tell us? Well, this just tells us that it's to the left. So in this case, you could either just give the magnitude and say it's to the left, or you could give it with a negative sign. But if we wanted to combine this with other forces, then it's very important to have the right sign, because we can't combine words. We can only combine signs. One thing here is make sure you're finding the force on the right charge. It would be easy to try to find the force over here, and then you would get the direction wrong. Of course, by Newton's third law, the magnitude of the force on this charge is the same as this magnitude, but it would have a positive sign, because it would be in the opposite direction. OK, well, one thing that we just learned here is we don't need r hat. right? We can clearly get this correct without worrying about r hat. The only purpose of r hat is to indicate the direction, but we don't need that. It's obvious what the direction is. Yeah. All right, so this is really all you need to solve problems, just this formula for magnitudes.